Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Make It Make, where I always try to encourage you guys, if you can't get it to make, then make it make. And today we are going to be continuing our series on the Amish Canning Part 3. So we have a lot to go over in this video. Um, I have a bunch of notes written down. I'm sorry if it's a lengthy video, but I can promise you that we're just going to be going over a lot of really good things. If you are going to be starting this type of canning method, then um, I really suggest that you look into the other videos to get all the information as possible. And we are actually still going, okay? Also, I need to let you know that if you've never canned before, I always suggest canning by USDA methods first. Not because I don't believe in these in these methods, it's just because I a lot of the times there's so much fear associated with it. And unless you've grown up with your grandmother or your mother doing it, um, you may not have the confidence um, or you know the lack of fear to be able to do these methods. Also, I always, see, I always have to say that the methods uh, Amish canning um, is considered rebel canning. I hate to call it that. I like to call it original canning. It is not USDA approved. It is not FDA approved. It is not NCHFP approved, okay? So there is nothing that I talk about in this entire series that is approved. And then when you do these methods, um, you are doing them entirely at your own risk. It's just a disclaimer. This has been happening a lot when I buy my, uh, you know, 12 quarts or 12 pints is that I'm getting lids that are buckled. It's happening more often than not. I can't use this. This is why I buy my fridge jars canning lids. Um, I do have a discount code, it's make it 10 I'll make sure that I put it here, all caps, for 10% off every single time. All right, so let's talk about these water bathing methods. I know a lot of people have asked me if I'm going to be making tutorials for every single one. I'm gonna say no, and the only reason why is because for every recipe I have, I know that my family won't eat. Uh, with that said, though, I'm more than happy to share the recipes that I won't be making um, tutorials about. But as you guys do know, I did make the potatoes and they came out so beautifully. I told you that I would give you an update on them and we are actually going to be trying the potatoes right now. So it's been a couple of weeks. Let's show you a close up on them. The salt's kind of at the bottom here. Look how beautiful, guys. I really do think that they came out just like hers. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I actually saw Susie and this, guys, this was so great. Um, she was willing to watch the video on, uh, you know, making the potatoes with uh, the Amish canner. And I was like, do you want to watch it? Are you sure? And she's like, yes, I'd be fine with that. And boy, did it ever give her the biggest smile when she, when I called them Susie's potatoes, because I'm like, well, they are, they're Susie's potatoes. This is how I learned them. So that's what I called them. So she was so happy uh, to see that you guys are being blessed. I told her how thankful you all are as well. And she said the potatoes came out beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try them today and we're gonna see if we can actually taste the vinegar. So I'm gonna open it up right now. I don't have my jar opener with me, so. Oh, okay. That's a good seal. That's a good seal. It smells like potatoes to me. <laughs> All right. Let's try one here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally just kidding. Hmm. Oh my gosh. These potatoes are perfect. Hmm. Perfect. This was a golden harvest potato. I'm sorry. I am so excited about these. All right, because the last time I made potatoes, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm like totally chomping away. 
Maybe I should finish what I'm eating. <sighs> Guys, I will never can my potatoes any other way again. I will always water bath these. Always. It tastes like a slice of a baked potato. That's what it tastes like. I don't taste the vinegar at all. I'm super, super impressed by this method. Now, some things, um, like the other day, I canned, I water bathed, I water bathed green beans, okay? And I'm gonna show you uh, the process as I'm talking on how I did it. You know, basically what I did was add the pink Himalayan salt, and uh, that was a teaspoon of that salt, and uh, one tablespoon of vinegar per quart. And I did, yeah, I did 15 quarts, and then I had some leftover to freeze as well. Now, will I always do my green beans through a water bath? Probably if it's like too hot, I'll take the heat outside and do it and I can do all 15 quarts. It just depends how I feel. Um, I could also, you know, cut my time in half, you know, by being able to pressure can it too. So I see the benefits of pressure canning and water bath. But I'll tell you what, because they both come out the same. They taste the same, whether it's water bath or whether it's pressure canned. And no, I do not taste the vinegar in this one as well. But when it comes to these potatoes, I will never pressure can potatoes again. I will always, always water bath them. So super excited about this, guys. I'm so happy. I'm so thrilled. I believe you can make a mashed potato with it. I might use it in my shepherd's pie today. I, I'm just so excited. Um, I was pretty sure you guys are probably over it, but I mean, look, they came out perfect. All right, so the next thing we're going to be covering are some vintage canning books, Amish and Mennonite uh, canning and cookbooks that I can put a link down in my description and you can choose whether or not you want to buy them yourself, okay? So the first book I wanna talk about is the Kerr Home Canning Book. This is uh, a reprint of the 1945 book. Uh, this I wanted this book because I wanted to see how they used to can back in 1945. And yes, all of the methods that are here, and by the way, you might need a, ma a magnifying glass because look how small that print is. Um, the stuff that they are canning in here, guys, through water bath, I couldn't believe. They give you a water bath option. They give you a pressure canning option. I mean, they have all kinds of stuff here for what's the water bath method and then what's the pressure canning method. They have it all here. Water bath and pressure canning for both, okay? So this was done, all right? Uh, the only thing that this book talks about is basically if you're going to take um, a, a food, like your, sorry, I can't speak today. Like, let's say here, like when it comes to opening up your potatoes again, I just opened them up and ate my potatoes. Well, according to this book here, it says if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you water bath it for 10 more minutes before you serve to your family. So that's the method that apparently was, you know, some people actually to this day still use is that you would can, you know, water bath, but before you serve it to your family, you would water bath it again for 10 more minutes. Now, Susie and I had this conversation. It was just kind of, I was curious and I said, do you guys do that? Do you, you know, water bath it for 10 more minutes before you serve it to your family? And she was like, what? Like, she's like, no, never. She's like, we've never done that. And she said, I, I feel like I could safely speak for the Amish community here in Pennsylvania. She's like, we don't do that at all. But I'm just trying to tell you guys, if that's another method of safety you would go, like to go ahead and do, it's not like it's unheard of. And people to this day will still rewater bath um, their jars for 10 more minutes. All in all, this is a really good book to have. Again, and I'll have the link in my description. Just a fun book and very interesting to read about the history of canning and how people used to do it back then. All right, so here is a real authentic Amish book that uh, my, my friend Susie, obviously, she so lovingly let me borrow. 
Um, it's called the Esh Family Cookbook, The Humps. And she said that this Amish family, they just called them The Humps. I don't know why. But I did some research on Amazon trying to find this book because obviously she, she let me make a copy of it because it's just something that this is the first edition that was written and I only needed the canning part of it. So I only, you know, took that part. But when I went online, I noticed that there was an Amish canning book by the Esh family called The Humps. And I'm like, well, what are the odds of that? That must be like their book. So once again, Susie and I were talking and I showed her the picture, which I will show you the picture here of the book that I found on Amazon. And she said, yes, yes, that is their book. She said, it must be a second or third edition. She said, but yes, that is their book. Um, I will put the link in the description for that below. I don't know how many there are because it's sold by a seller from Goodwill. So I don't know. But the other thing is, it's like $35 for this book, $35. But if it were me, I would go buy it, even though that is very expensive for a cookbook. Um, but I just wanted to at least give you that resource. You don't have to go ahead and buy it, but I will put the link to where I found it below in my description. The other Mennonite uh, book that I wanna show you guys is one of the first books uh, my friend gave me. Her name's Teresa, and we are going to be doing a video together, hopefully here soon, as long, I think she said to plan on yes, but I haven't gotten like a solid 100% yes yet, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. Anyway, the book is called Weaver School Family Cooking, and I obviously will have a link for this below. I love this book. This was a gift from her. I treasure it. I've used it so hard. I mean, <laughs> my kids have scribbled in it. Um, look, let me show you here. It's It's been used. I've had this for, oh my gosh, maybe over 20 years. <laughs> my children have just you know, scribbled all over it. But I mean, it, this is a beautiful book. And we've got appetizers, beverages, breads, breakfast, soups, sandwiches, salads, salad dressings, uh, meat dishes, casseroles, vegetables, uh, foreign foods, cakes and frosting, pies, cookies and candies, desserts, canning and freezing, decor and miscellaneous. Every time I come across one of the Amish or Mennonite books, they always have a miscellaneous section. And I love it because it's great for kids or grandkids because they teach you how to make Play-Doh from scratch, how they make GAC, how they make uh, bubbles, different recipes for things like that, how to set a table in a different way, sort of a plain way. And I love uh, the little verses and stories that come with this book. But this is a genuine Mennonite cooking book. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. It is a wonderful book. And boy, if you want to know how to make a casserole, okay, in a different, in, in every way, uh, get this book because I sure mastered how to make a casserole with it. Okay, so there's two other topics that I'd like to discuss in this video. Um, and that's going to be the canned grapes and also uh, canning in odd jars with its existing lids. Now I came across this blog called My Burial Homestead Life, and the man who writes the blog, Daryl, is a super, super nice guy, but I feel, in my opinion, that he has really mastered this skill. Um, and I suggest highly in checking out his blog because I'm reading it and learning it myself. It's something that I've never done, but I'm absolutely gonna do because reusing jars um, with its existing lids and using them for canning can save a lot of money. And in the blog, he takes you step by step on how to do this process, you know, this method, whether it would be through water bath or it would be through uh, pressure canning. And I have some pictures here that I'll show real quickly. I'll try to move out of the way here. Um, but definitely I will be linking his blog in the description below so that way you guys can check it out. It's definitely worth a read. Um, it's just so well written and I love it and I cannot wait to do this method myself. Okay, ha, 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 ha. here we have the canned grapes. Now let me give you a little bit of a background story on these grapes. So what happened here in Pennsylvania was there was this truck that had like thousands of grapes on them but what something happened was that 
they did not have enough people to unload the truck for these grapes. So they finally said, you know what, we can't sell these grapes. Let's just give them away for free. So many people went to the trucks that had these grapes. I'm not kidding you. It was like a huge thing here and just took them. Some people froze their grapes and some people canned them. Susie canned them. Now, don't get way too excited because one of the things she told me was, this is an experiment, she said. And she was like, if you don't, if you open it up, this, this is literally what she told me. She said, now, if you open it up and it smells bad, she goes, just get rid of it. She goes, because this is an experiment. She said, but I can't imagine that it could be anything different than fruit cocktail that you would buy at the store. And I had got me to thinking, so do I recommend trying this recipe right now? Uh, no, just because, um, I mean, she gave me the recipe and what she did, and I can tell you, but I haven't tried it yet. And she did, she was very clear on saying that this was an experiment, but it looks fine to me. So basically uh, what she did was because of the pesticide, she said, I put, I rinsed these guys with a little bit of peroxide. That's I'm just telling you what she said she did. Okay, and then she just put the grapes in, filled it up with water, and she used stevia. I don't know much how, how much stevia she used, but she did say if you didn't use stevia, she would use one-fourth cup of sugar per quart jar. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, that's a lot of sugar. And she's like, well, you could probably use less. She goes, but when it comes to fruit, she said, you definitely want to have sugar in it. And then she processed for 15 minutes. Now, again... Uh, I don't recommend just going ahead and using that recipe until I just kind of taste them myself and see how they how they taste. But I really do trust her because I mean, she's been doing this forever and she just kind of knows how to make a recipe. So whenever I do try them, I'm not going to open up another jar because I have like four jars of food that we already have to eat. Uh, I will let you guys know. And if you can your grapes, Definitely let me know how you do it. What does it taste like? Some people said they used Welchers in it or it tastes like Welchers, but definitely let me know because I love to learn from my audience as well. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for my Amish canning video part three. I always want to thank you for your beautiful stories and for the precious time that you just take from your life just to watch my videos. So uh, we will be back with, I don't know, maybe a tutorial next time or an Amish recipe maybe um, another Amish part four. You guys let me know what you would like to see next, okay? But either way, guys, thank you. And as always, as always, take care and God bless.